Hey Mustangs, this is Miss Flores here in the art room. This is your first official video for this school year. We are going to practice value drawing from still lifes. So we are incorporating contour lines, value shading, and drawing from observation. We're also going to try different materials today. So this is kind of what you're looking for at the end. And I've labeled some of these different materials like charcoal, the sketch and wash, the watercolor pencils, the Conte, it's like colored charcoal. Um, I use that one again, and then a regular uh, ebony pencil. So I'm going to walk you through it step by step, and then you guys are going to practice today. So here's my paper. I'm going to start uh, just doing a basic outline of what I'm looking at with an ebony pencil. I've taped my paper down, so I'm gonna do my, my best here. So I'm drawing from what I see. So if I'm over on the other side, it's not gonna look the same as this. And you're kind of a bird's eye view, so you're from above. If you wanna get exactly level, you can. I'm not going to, because it's gonna sound funny. So my view is looking up. I'm looking at this still life. It's just basic cubes and spheres, all sorts of 3D shapes. Uh, I'm not expecting perfection, but I am expecting that you're drawing what you're seeing. This is a skill that we've been working on, and some of you don't like it, and I know that, and that's okay. Um, we're just growing grit here. I think you've heard me say that multiple times. You're just going to get better at something that challenges you. When you're uncomfortable in an area, you grow. So, Mine won't look perfect. I don't expect yours to. You know, all I expect is that you give me your best. So, as we go, I'm just doing it one step at a time. And I'm really looking to see where things line up. Right? That one needs to be a little different. But I'm not doing one whole shape because everything is overlapped. So I'm here now, so I'm going to make sure that there's space like there is here, and it, they actually kind of line up here, so I'm just going to draw what I see. My eye isn't perfect, nor is my picture, nor will my lines be exactly straight. So where you get to play with the materials is in uh, the value and the shading. Hopefully we have enough natural light today in the classroom that you'll be able to see the light, the medium, and the dark values where things go. Uh, you can draw the base if you want. You don't have to. Um, I kind of add, like you saw here, just a line so it's not floating in space. Um, you guys know how I feel about that. We don't need things floating. It also kind of helps you like determine where you're at and what you're looking at. I'm going to go back here because as you can see, I'm not doing this um, exactly, right? I'm stopping and returning and stopping and returning. 3D forms are challenging, but they help you as an artist become a stronger realistic drawer. And so then you will be able to use this when you're looking at other stuff that you're interested in drawing, other types of um, subject matter. In theory, you're going to apply this all the time, wherever you're at, so that you can make your art stronger. That's why you're in art class, right? So once I put down my entire entire thing this is what we're working on today so take your time and focus once you get that nice basic outline then you can continue if you want to try a different um, material in each one like I did go for it if you'd like to stick to one the whole time that is also fine I have an ink pen here so if I were to want to work on my value with that, I can add in, I can use hatching if I want. 
I could also cross hatch to start adding some value. If you look, there is a dark section right here and here. With any material that you use, the goal is your pressure. So if I'm going to be doing value with an ink pen, it might be more difficult. One way to go with darker and lighter values is hatching where it's light and then cross hatching where it gets darker. With ink, when you add another layer, it does tend to get darker. Um, other materials you could use, you could practice blending. So it's really up to you how you determine making it light, medium, and dark values. That's what I'll be looking for while you're working. So it's all about your pressure. And if you are a doodler of pen, then you will have some experience with it. You do not have to use ink today. I know we're using it for everything else in art class, uh, but you don't have to use it for this. Um, it's just an option. I also have available some watercolor pencils. Uh, this is mine. Um, the nice part about these is you color with them and it's very controlled. And then you add a little bit of water to it and it turns into watercolor. So you don't have to necessarily color the light. You leave that white like I did here and here, and then you just add the water in and it kind of blends in, okay? Again, pressure is how you determine your darks, your mediums, and your lights. And don't forget to add in, and I know it's kind of hard to see right now, but we might have some of the lights turned off. Don't forget to add in that grounding shadow. You know when we did our spheres in our sketchbooks, you had to add that shadow where your light source was? It really makes it look like it's sitting on the ground versus just shapes on a page. Another tool that you can use, I'm not completing these because I want to show you some of the different tools. Um, I expect you obviously to continue this and that would be lighter and then the white white. Uh, I have charcoal. I have different forms of it. Some have a pencil around it. Some are just sticks of charcoal. Charcoal is nice because you get a really, really dark, dark. Charcoal is a lot like chalk though. It can be messy. So if you are choosing to use charcoal, I would be aware that you're going to have a different effect um, than, say, an ebony pencil or watercolor will have. So my light is still going to be pretty dark because charcoal leaves a lot of residue. So this is one that you really need to have a lot of experience in to leave white whites. Um, but I feel like it's important to try and experiment with new things, especially if you've never used charcoal before. It's fun. I have an entire sketchbook that's just charcoal. Uh, I think I started it in high school. And there's different levels of charcoal as well. And then you can blend with it. I also have something called a tortillon that you can blend to. It's like a, a blending stick. You can use those for charcoal. You can use those for ebony pencils too. It's just another tool that helps improve your art and keeps your fingers less messy. So that is your assignment and challenge today. I look forward to seeing the results of your challenge. And if they're really nice and complete and finished, we can definitely hang them in the hallway so everyone can see what we're working on. Thank you for watching.